welcome to our next episode of our Major League Rugby Draft Show. And this time we're talking about three new positions. Fly half, scrum half, and lock. And why do we talk about them, uh, fly half, scrum half, and lock? Well, it's mostly about the numbers. So uh, there aren't a lot of locks uh, going on in the draft. So we sort of squeeze them in so we can get... Uh, we're doing four shows of about 25 players each, so it all comes 25 players. So let's get started with fly half. So we're really going through um, who's draftable, or uh, I, I shouldn't even use that term because it makes it seem like somebody's undraftable. And of course they're not uh, undraftable, it's just what we think, uh, what I think, I talk in the plural, uh, teams are looking for. And what players really sort of tick all the boxes. So the first guy I want to talk about in fly half would be Max Schumacher. Uh, Cal, captain, uh, turned that team around a little bit. They weren't bad at all, but they got a lot better when uh, he took over the number 10 jersey. Now he can play fullback as well. We talk a little bit about... Um, versatility and versatility can be good but can also be a curse if you're just sort of saying yeah sure I'll go wherever and you don't stake your claim to position I would love to see Schumacher get a lot of time and uh, to be helped along really uh, to help him develop as a fly half next up is Monty Weatherall from McGill and uh, a very uh, captain MVP for the Redbirds uh, he's an English uh, kid, uh, so doesn't check that domestic box necessarily, uh, but a very, very fine player on a very fine uh, Canadian rugby team and uh, would be another player you'd say, you know, give him a chance. Keelan Coyle, very talented fly half for St. Bonaventure, probably needs time, probably needs to learn about uh, a little bit more about how little time he has when he has the ball. Uh, but uh, he's got those skills. He's got great kicking skills. Uh, somebody who can get points as well. So that's definitely a draft option. Hugh Johnston, uh, Notre Dame College. A really fun guy. I got to know him a little bit. I got to heckle him a little bit in uh, youth rugby when he was refereeing, um, which was uh, which was fun because uh, I went up to uh, uh, to him to, to reiterate my uh, own stance on quick taps being that I think the tap should even in youth rugby be legal and should leave your hands and he's like I heard you I heard you so I, I understand so uh, a, a good guy a good leader he's actually going to be the interim head coach for Notre Dame College this fall so it'll be a very interesting thing I, uh, uh, the expectation is that uh, Hanno Van Uren will come back to Notre Dame College and Johnson will be free to sign. Uh, well, I suppose he could be free to sign anyway because you don't lose your coaching eligibility if you're playing professionally. So uh, a, a very smart player can do a lot of the things you need out of a fly half. Not an out-and-out -out crazy runner, but a distributor, a defender, a kicker, all of those things, and he just directs things very nicely. Jean-Louis de Goot out of uh, UBC Okanagan. That's an interesting one. Uh, you don't hear a lot about U UBC Okanagan out there in the interior in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, fly half and scrum half. And, and uh, we've talked a little bit about versatility players. And th here's a guy who could say, yeah, I can cover both of those. I think it would be useful. And I think, uh, you know, maybe a team will be looking for that. So now we, we enter... Um, a an area where a couple of players I'm not sure about, like Julian Roberts. Uh, Julian Roberts is a very talented rugby player and perhaps more f suited to sevens. We'll be talking about some other players, perhaps even more suited to sevens. Uh, really great attacking player. Is he a fly half? Is he a fly half on the professional level? I'm not sure about that, but uh, he could be a lot of things because he's fast enough to play in the wing. He's good enough passer to play in the centers. Is he strong enough defensively? Probably so, uh, Life University product, multi-skilled, a fly half, a push and play fly half, probably not. Tom K uh, from uh, Queens University, Charlotte. Here's a here's a sort of a classic fly half type in terms of um, you know he's going to play for position, he's going to use his uh, teammates, things like that. All do very well. Probably needs some time, uh, but he's a nice option if you haven't looked at a fly half and you're late in the draft 
uh, probably better off. I think uh, maybe he'll be happier if he doesn't actually get drafted, just go through the, goes through the process, becomes a free agent. I mentioned Stanislas Blazkowski in the fullback uh, episode. Uh, he does play fly half. He's uh, a Frenchman who's playing uh, for Concordia in Canada. Uh, so, yeah, he's an option as well, again, for the versatility. There are some players who um, got some questions about one way or the other. Uh, Matthew Antisev, Dartmouth. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you can just sort of slide him in. He's going to need some time. Uh, Alex Kelly Wehrman from uh, MSU Mankato, even more so. Of course, we talked about uh, lower division. I don't want to just knock lower division rugby. You can get great players out of there, but certainly in a decision-making position like fly half, where you have to make those decisions quick time, Defenses, defensive line speed is slower, ball is slower, a lot of things are slower in Division Two. Uh, so it's just difficult for me to say, yeah, you know, he, he can immediately just sort of handle even, uh, you know, a few minutes. Uh, it's going to be some time. Uh, <clears throat> George Fountain uh, from uh, Sacramento State, very good player. I believe can also play uh, scrum half. Um Nice little player. Uh, should probably need some time in club rugby and continue to build on what he can do. Uh, Aiden Farrell, Mark Lewis, West Virginia, same story. Uh, these are players who will need time. Will probably just go through the draft process. They just take it, check it off. Yep, okay, fine. I'm going to move to uh, the town that I want to move in uh, to and, and get going with my rugby as well as my career. And finally, I think uh, Tinoma Makudza uh, Chipfumbo, Chief Chipfumbo from Wheeling. What to do about him? Man, he's, he's just such an exciting player as a fly half, as a playmaker for Wheeling. Professional rugby, not really like that. Uh, MLR is a little, in, it's faster in one way, slower in another way. Uh, much more physical. This is a guy who I think, um, if he finds the right pathway... Could be great in sevens. Could be world class in sevens. But um, right now, 15s, to put him in there and just say, hey, man, do your thing, MLR teams aren't probably going to go for that. In scrum half, I, I was really just sort of, I was having a tough time. Uh, you know, it's for me, I sort of look through and I say, yeah, these guys are, are draft likely and these others are on the fence and these others need some time and things like that. Difficult for me on scrum half, I think. I, in the end, I've, I've got two guys that I think are draftable. The first one, far and away, Matteo Peñon for Lindenwood. Frenchman, um, just so much attitude. Huge amount of attitude. Very fit. Blew everybody away at the Collegiate Shield in terms of the Bronco test. Um, like nobody else was even close. Um, and he's, he's a goal kicker as well. He's just... Um, He's one of those players that if when when you start rooting for a team and he's on another team, you hate him, but you'd love to have him on your team. He's just a pest. Uh, so I think I think teams are very interested in him. Uh, yes, he's young. Yes, he's not. He doesn't check that domestic player uh, box, but he's a talent. Uh, T.J. Van Rensburg, Arkansas State. I think uh, definitely has some options. Uh, got some Schultz Award and. Uh, uh, mentions and, and attention and I think he's another draftable player who can come and help a team pretty quickly so who else is on there Lachlan Charlie from Lindenwood and uh, Nicholas Hartley Austin Hunter I think was with Minnesota S&T Jacob King from Minnesota Duluth not enough rugby and I, I think I think really I should have uh, mentioned that with regard to uh, uh, Callie Wayman uh, down uh, up there at MSU Mankato. They just don't play enough rugby as well as they're in Division Two, but they're just not playing enough. Um, Mark Carvajal in Central Florida could actually be a dark horse. You could keep an eye out for him. Um, and uh, Evan Oakowski from uh, Wisconsin Stout. Again, uh, well, they're playing enough. It's it's just going to be a real... Uh, it's just guesswork for me on that one, I think. Uh, t then uh, Javier Luong uh, from the Omaha Goats had played at Wayne State. Very handy player, uh, could be a dark horse, and definitely one to watch out for. Tyson Lucas um, is a player who's been uh, up and about and out and around uh, out of Texas. 
uh, in the age grades, things like that. Coming out of Arkansas Razorbacks, uh, could be a fly half, could be a center, could be a number of things. Could be a really useful, actually, utility back. Uh, you know, you're looking at a, a, a 36 pick here. Yeah, you know, take a shot. At lock, I had a little bit easier time just sort of saying, okay, I know where these guys fit. Um, I do have a number one guy. Um, I kind of have three number one guys. So we'll, we'll start with my number one, number one, uh, which would be Ricky Rose. And uh, Rose out of St. Bonaventure. Huge. Fit. An athlete. A leader. Uh, I, you know, he's the captain of the team. Um, he's I, 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 six, 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 seven, maybe six, eight. He's, he's, he's a big body. He's going to take care of business. And I think he could be somebody... And we don't see a lot, right? We saw, you know, we, we talk about people like Andrew Guerra, Connor Mooneyham, or uh, this past year, Sam Gala, or even Emmanuel Albert to a certain extent. Um, players who went into the MLR <clears throat> and got minutes immediately. Gala just sort of slotted in as a starter, um, which is great. I think Rick Rose could do that too. James Rivers, Arizona. I mean, it's, it's really, in a way, um, not that much different from Rose. Uh MVP of the Arizona team, big man, 6'6", six, six, I believe, um, powerful but fit, gets around the park, captain, leader. Um, uh, do You could do a lot worse than shoring up your second row for the next 10 years by uh, drafting someone like him and giving him a lot of money. Charlie Overton from Life University, I think, is, is around that Rivers and Rose area. Big, strong man, uh, knows how to play hard rugby in a hard physical conference and i think that's one of the things that you see um and if, if i go back a little bit uh the rugby east it's a meat grinder uh you might say well maybe it's not the absolute toughest teams all the way through although they've had the national champion in the last two years but you get game after game after game after game all of them really hard uh arizona you know they play a small conference schedule, but they play tough games all the way, and, and you're going to be playing, uh, you know, Cal, UCLA, Grand Canyon, St. Mary's, very tough. Uh, and Life University, who are now moving into the Rugby East, but we're playing in the Mid-South, playing Lindenwood twice, Arkansas State twice, Davenport twice, uh, and some additional one games as well against really tough teams. Um, it's just a meat grinder, and players who come out of second row out of that who have been expected to be the tough man on campus, uh, you got to respect that. Uh, two possibles uh, I really want to look at. Uh, uh, Josh Halliday of Trinity Western, he's an underclassman, he's a junior, so he's definitely a possibility at some point, somebody to look at. I'm, I guess maybe he's looking to test it out right now, or maybe I misread his, his bio. That can happen as well with COVID stuff people getting extra years and and really he doesn't need them so if he's graduated then you know josh all power to you and the other one is miles brown i i i think miles brown fits into this category uh that we have for rose and for rivers a leader uh it's just i mean he put sacramento state on his back um and he's just uh you know he, a workhorse who works so hard very very good player uh needs to put on a few pounds um he's he's just sort of like you know my mother used to say he would uh describe him as uh somebody who put his shirt on and left his coat hanger still in the shirt uh but we've seen athletes uh who operate like that alan Wynn jones would be a great example uh who just have that like bony shoulders uh put put about 30 pounds on him uh eat a few sandwiches miles uh, I think in a few years, a couple of years, he could be a monster. Ryan Maves, uh, Sacramento State, another Sacramento State player, very good player. Uh, it's going to be tough to break through and say, yeah, I'm better than those other uh, four or five second rows. So uh, that's, that's why it's difficult to be drafted. Quinn Dennis out of Oklahoma, a little bit small perhaps. Uh, Sean Martin uh, out of Arizona State. These, again, is, is a, they're not bad players at all. But, you know, that I often recommend type five forwards to be drafted. I think um, this time around, this year, second row is really good. Because Miles Brown is really good, and I listed him fourth. 
Um, I think you can get uh, a franchise second row this year. All right, that's going to do it. Let me know what you think. We've got uh, two more episodes of our positions to come. And I want to thank everybody who supports uh, Golf Rugby Report. Go to golfrugbyreport.com forward slash support dash GRR to help us out. Thank you to our sponsors, U.S. Rugby Foundation, Irish Rugby Tours, Next Phase Rugby, and all the other people who support us. Uh, we appreciate it.